Hey folks, I'm Demotro. Welcome back to my combo classroom for another bonus video where today I want to talk about a question that many people have asked me before, which is why does a negative number times a negative number always equal a positive number? And not just mathematically, but some people also want to know how could I get an instinctual gut feeling for why that should be the case? Well, this is something that trips a lot of people up because negatives are weird. If we talk about the complex plane, which involves imaginary numbers, that's sort of like having a four-way mirror of the natural positive numbers. And a lot of people aren't even used to that and don't know much about the complex plane at all, yet we think we're very used to the negatives. But the negatives are sort of like halfway to the complex plane. We've already taken the positive part of the number line and mirrored it and gained some new strange properties. Plus, when we look at negatives under addition, if I ever take a negative quantity and add something negative to it, the result is definitely going to be negative. But when I take a negative quantity and multiply it by something negative, the result turns positive. So to explain why that is the case and why that should just feel correct, I'm going to go through a few different analogies for it. But first, let's just look at the rules of what happens when we multiply things together that involve some of them being negative. Well, if I multiply a string of numbers, we have what's called the absolute value of the result, which is like its size regardless of sign. And if we have some of them negative and it's an even amount of them that are negative, like zero or two or four of them are negative or etc., then the result will end up being positive because they cancel out in pairs mathematically. That pair cancels, and if I had two more, that pair would cancel. But if I have an odd amount of negative signs in a string of things multiplied together, the result will be odd because they'll all have canceled out in pairs apart from one. But why do they cancel out in pairs? Well, let's start with an analogy using language. We're used to double negatives becoming positives in language as well. If I say, I'm not not in my combo classroom, that means I am in my combo classroom. Or if I say something is not inedible, inedible being not edible in disguise, that means the thing is edible. And so maybe it makes sense that with numbers as well, if we have some sort of double negative, it might cancel out. Now, another analogy for why this double negative would cancel out is to consider any number with a negative sign as being a quantity of the absolute value and then the sign being something that flips it in a way. And we're flipping in a sort of binary way, like let's say I had something facing one way, and if we flip it twice, then it's back where it started. So if I started in the flipped state, which would be like a negative number, and then flip it by multiplying by another negative sign, we're sort of back in our positive direction. Now, before I get to a more real world analogy about negatives times negatives, let me use one more sort of surreal analogy that I thought of related to this, which is imagine you had a light that could be two different colors, let's say blue or red, and could be tinted a certain amount of darkness. So we could have anywhere from light blue to dark blue or light red to dark red. And let's say this light started at a certain color and then switched to another, and we wanted to describe the transformation. Well, we might need to come up with some particular tint or another that we call our neutral so that we could use numbers to describe if the new color was darker or lighter than that. 
and we might need some symbol to describe if it flipped colors. Maybe our symbol would look something like a negative sign, because if I wanted to describe some change like light blue to dark red, maybe I would use some number larger than one to show how much darker it got, the tint change being like the absolute value change, and maybe I would use some symbol like a negative sign to show that the color had flipped from blue to red, or the other way around. And if I flipped the color twice, it would be like having two negative signs that canceled out because we'd be back at our original color, regardless of whether it was darker or lighter with its tint or absolute value. Now, that's a bit more of a surreal analogy, so let's go to a more real world example. Let's say, that you have some amount of days passing. This axis will be time. And let's say that you have some amount of money we're keeping track of. Well, first let's start with a situation where you're not spending any money and you're gaining, let's say, $2 a day. So this will be zero or wherever we started and then we're up there, up there, and etc. Now, if I asked on a particular day, like say day three, how much richer am I than three days ago? That would be like doing three, the amount of days, times the amount of money gained per day, which we said two per day, leaving us at six. And if I went the other way around, asking, oh, from this day, what was my money total comparatively three days ago? Now, time is going in the other direction. And if we're counting time as one of our axes, we want to call that negative movement. So now we have negative three days, essentially, times two dollars, leaving us negative six. We had $6 less back then. So what about a sort of opposite scenario where we started with some money and then we lost $2 each day or hopefully spent it on something good and didn't just lose it. Overall, we're getting $2 poorer per day. Now, if I asked on a given day, how much richer was I some amount of days before that, let's say three days before, that would be like a negative three because we're looking backwards on the time axis times a negative two because we were losing $2 per day. Negative two times negative three is six, and that makes sense here. We were six dollars positively richer three days before. Now, hopefully some of these analogies helped you folks understand some intuitive reasons why we get this effect of pairs of negative signs canceling out if we multiply them together, and maybe a sense for how negative signs in general are sort of flipping a number in a binary way where if they were to flip again, they would be back on the side they started on, which confuses people because we also have changing magnitudes. If I multiply by a number larger than one, one, then something's going to grow in absolute value. Whereas if I multiply by something between zero and one, or between zero and negative one, something's absolute value will shrink. So we have a few things going on when we're multiplying. How much the distance from zero changes, and which side of zero is it on? And leave a comment if you can think of any other analogies for why a negative times a negative 
always equals a positive. Also, make sure you all know this is just my bonus channel, and my best episodes are on my channel just called Combo Class, including the one linked at the top of this description, which is the longest edited project I've ever made, including some cool personal research, so make sure you've checked that out. And I'll see you again on this channel for more fun bonus content soon.